Hey guys, welcome to Kachi Bachi. Today we are making some felt using wool roving in order to turn it into little popsicle color sorters for our daughter. So stay tuned. So this is future Jordan joining you once again to help expedite this process. We definitely spent way more time felting the sheets of felt than we did felting the wool balls. But it's a very, very similar process. We let Frances pick which one she wanted us to do first, and she was rather indecisive there. So we went with green. And all we did was rip it into very thin pieces or pull it apart, if you would. She helped with this process for the first one. And I will definitely say I would have some grace for your kiddos if you're doing this with them because it gets pretty boring pretty quickly. Um, at least it did for Frances. Maybe if you have slightly older kids, they join in this process a little bit longer, but she definitely, yeah, this was about the extent of her excitement level, and then soap and water became far more interesting, so, but you have to do this with every single one, so. All we did was lay out and make three layers going one direction and then the second layer going the opposing direction and then the third layer going back in the same direction as the first layer. And you just lay your felt hairs, if you would, gently on top of one another. And the bigger the rectangle, the bigger your sh like sheet of felt will be. We had rather small ones because we didn't need big ones. You pour some warm water on it. We tried it with gauze. Um, if you have mesh, you can put mesh over it. And then we just put a little soap to get that alkaline um, environment. And this is where Frances really fell in love with soapy water. <laughs> yes, and splashing soapy water. <laughs> um, you will see how everyone became soaked through this process. But Soapy fun hands and floors was <laughs> the enjoyment. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, who doesn't love this? A kid experiencing soapy feet on tile. Right, that's way more fun than whatever mom's doing over there. <laughs> so she also did scratch her eye in the process <laughs> of this. We have no clue where at, though, because there was a lot of this happening. Um, so, yeah, we essentially just layered our soap underneath some bubble wrap after we got it initially started felting with the gauze, and then you just rub, and you can change directions with it and rub, and then change directions with it and rub until you see those little fibers stop sticking up. And then you can put it in a ball in your hand and rub and get the soap off and rub. And so it's really just about creating that friction, using that heat to help bind and open up the pores of the fibers. And then they will interlock to one another. <laughs> Music is definitely a good idea. Yeah. And sweep before you do this so that you can just mop afterwards yeah we tried our darndest to get her involved um and she liked it enough if you would she didn't quite get the concept with this like she did with the wool balls but she had fun and it was just hanging out with mom and dad and that's all that's important really so that was not our most successful attempt this is not what you would want. <laughs> so we had some loose areas in that one. And that really comes from like how you nestle the fibers together. We definitely improved as we went along um, and got better and better by the last of our felt sheets. Ours wound up being about four inches by five inches, which was all we needed to make her little popsicles. Again with the soapy water. Oh yeah, so if you don't know anything about felting, felting from my understanding or how I was taught, there's all sorts of different um, folklore around how it originated if you Google it, but I took a class at the public library when I was probably like 20 or so, 
And what I learned was that it was from sheep farmers out in cold winters and they had wooden clogs and so they would take the sheep's fur and just clip some of it and shove it in their shoes to help keep their feet warm. And then once they did that, they realized that the heat and the sweat, actually that moisture created enough friction and it felted. And so over the course of like a few days, as they kept putting more and more wool into their little wooden clogs, then they ended up with a wool slipper inside of their clog. And that is my understanding of how wool originated. Um, But you are welcome to look up and see and find your own version if you choose. There's so many different stories out there as to how it actually originated. But I particularly like that one. It's logical to me. It makes sense. (laughs) It took so long. (laughs) Here's the thing. Jordan never tells me how long these projects are going to take. So it's like, oh, hey, why don't you stop work and, you know, come and we'll film in the kitchen and it'll be fun. (laughs) Three hours later, I'm mopping the kitchen floor. Right. (laughs) I mean, I didn't know. It's been so long since I felt it, guys. And you never know. (laughs) So we just kind of roll with it. (laughs) Say la vie. (laughs) As you can see, Frances has free reign of the kitchen, and she knows where the measuring cups and spoons are, and so she went and got them for herself and was scooping soapy water and dumping it all over the floor. Um, A very enjoyable process. (laughs) And from here, you do a little cleanup. So it was nap time. We mopped our floors and put our kid to bed. (laughs) A wild husband appears. Because Jordan hates asking you guys to subscribe and whatnot. So here we go. If you like this sort of thing, and you like making, and you like crafty moms, and you like learning stuff, and all of that, then you should subscribe. Because we want to do this for a living, and Jordan wants to do this full time. So only you can make that possible for us. Ta-da! So do the things. If you liked it, like it the button below. If you want to see more of this stuff, hit the subscribe button. If you would like other people to see this stuff, why don't you share it with your friends? Also, if you would like to follow our journey as we build this YouTube channel and buy more Montessori stuff, we... That was a huge bug. (laughs) Also... We are getting super close to a thousand subscribers. We are planning some really, really big stuff, including covering uh, beginning sewing and beginning quilting. We're super excited and we have some surprise planned. So make sure you're stay tuned for that. And if you want to follow our other journey with Montessori stuff that we're purchasing and not making ourselves, we have another channel. It's going to be covering our purchasing experience for Montessori stuff and YouTube stuff. So it's kind of more of a nerdy behind the scenes, but if you're into that sort of stuff and you just need more of us in your lives, feel free to go and subscribe there and check us out there. Oh yeah, so there you go. We had wool felt. Um, From here, you would take popsicle sticks and color them in whatever color felts that you had. The first thing I would recommend is if you have this going near your toddler's mouth to use things that are non-toxic. So whether it's Crayola washable markers or a non-toxic paint, whatever it is, Make sure that you're okay with it actually going into your kid's mouth and that potentially if it gets wet, it's not necessarily going to smear or get onto other things. Obviously, you'd hopefully train your kid to not put them in their mouth, but inevitably it probably will go there. And so just make sure you're okay with whatever's on it being in their mouth. Because it's like the first thing. Yeah, that's definitely the first thing Frances did. And she definitely had black fingers for the next three hours because of course she put the black popsicle stick into her mouth. And then I just made a gentle U shape and used that one as a template to cut out all the rest of them. I tried using a 28 millimeter rotary cutter and it did okay, but I found it was easier and faster to use scissors. So I opted for that down the road. Um, But you'll just cut out two of each color and you want to make sure that they're roughly long enough for your popsicle sticks. 
And shameless plug, if you want to learn more about rotary cutters, check out our video on rotary cutters. It is linked down below. And as you can see here, I swapped over to my scissors because I could do two layers at once and it was just a little bit easier overall for me. Um, I was more satisfied with the curves that I was getting there. So you then will match your thread. You don't have to, but you might as well. I would have judged myself if I didn't do it. So I went ahead and did it. Um, or you can have your husband match your threads for you. So I was sewing my decorative stitches over there and he was matching the thread colors for us. So you can pick whatever stitch you may have on your sewing machine, whether it's straight stitches or zigzag, or if you have some really fun decorative stitches, I think this is a great place to use those. You will sandwich your two felt pieces of the same color and sew all the way around. Well, thanks for joining us. This is our final product and it's really as simple as a popsicle stick and a little felt pocket and they will just match them up, sliding it in. Just for funsies, we did different decorative stitches on each one because we can and because our machines have them, so why not use them? Because very rarely do we have good enough opportunity to use some of these super cute little stitches, particularly these asymmetric ones that um, can be more and more challenging to find a home for. So this was just our selection. Obviously you can use any of your decorative stitches. I personally haven't seen any of these out there with decorative stitches. It's always like a zigzag or just a straight stitch. And I thought that was really fun. It made me quite happy. So hopefully it will make you happy and make it a little more fun as you make them. But thanks for joining us and you have a great day.